Did you read a review where the critic told you you should not or should see a film? But then you found out that without a doubt the film critic must have been ill. It's the attack, the attack, the attack, the attack of the rotten tomatoes. It's the attack, the attack, now it's time to fight back against rotten tomatoes. What up guys, I'm Kyler Wilson. And I'm Monica Kasari. And we'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Attack of the Rotten Tomatoes. You may have noticed a slight change in the intro. That wasn't a mistake. That's right, we also attack movies that Rotten Tomatoes has given two favorable reviews to. And that movie today is Furious 7. Now you may remember from our review of Furious 7 that we actually enjoyed this film quite a lot. And apparently so did everyone else. It currently has a critic score of 81% and an audience score of 84. And that makes this the most favorable Fast and the Furious film in the franchise on Rotten Tomatoes. Check this breakdown. Coming in at number 7 is the fourth Fast film with a 28%. Number 6 on the list is the second film at 36%, followed by number 5, which is the third film at 37%. Number four is the first film at 53%. Number three is Fast and the Furious 6 at 69%. Number two is the Fast Five at 78%. And number one is Furious 7 at 81%. Which is fucking insane. Can you name a single franchise of movies where people thought the seventh in the series was the best? No, you can't. And we can't either. So let's take a look at what the critics have to say. From Felix Vasquez Jr. One of the best movies of the year. Well, Felix, I hesitate to accept the opinion of someone who thinks that this over-the-top action flick could possibly be one of the best movies of the year. Furthermore, if you thought it was one of the best movies of the year, why didn't you give it a 4 out of 4, bro? From Josh Terry. Can you really call a film bad if it achieves exactly what it sets out to achieve? Yes. Yes, you can. For example, San Andreas knew what it was, Poltergeist knew what it was, Jurassic World knew what it was, and Terminator Genesis knew what it was. All those movies set out to achieve exactly what they achieved, but you gave them all worse marks than this film, and you did that because they were bad films. From Rob Vo. I'm waiting for the scene in this series when Vin Diesel straps himself to a Wile E. Coyote rocket and lights the fuse. First off, it's not a Wile E. Coyote rocket. It's an acne rocket. If you're gonna insult someone with an old pop culture reference, maybe do a little research. Second off, to our viewers, I know what you're thinking. That sounds like a negative review, but it ain't. You know, it kind of sounds like, oh my god, what will they do next? Well, guess what? Rob flipped the script on everybody and actually gave this a positive review. How about you leave the cheeky humor to us and focus on a real damn movie review, K okay, Rob? From Eric Mellon. The actors are completely secondary. The hoops they jump through to get to the next action scene are just that. The expositional dialogue starts only after the action scene has, because they know we don't care why they're there. We're already with them. Well, Eric, it's when you take on the opinion that the actors are secondary and the story doesn't matter that we get delivered heaping piles of garbage. And it is with Eric's review that I stumbled on something that I find quite interesting. He has Furious 7 listed as a 3 out of 4 movie. If you scroll up, you'll see that he lists Mad Max has a 3.5 out of 4 movie. And right below that movie is what we like to call the smoking gun. Avengers 2 Age of Ultron got a 4 out of 5 rating. Not out of 4, but out of 5. Now you might be asking me why I mentioned this. Because as I look through these movies, I see that some aren't even rated at all. Some are even given a letter for a grade. I've since emailed Rotten Tomatoes about this discrepancy and I'm waiting for a response back. I'll let you know as soon as I have some info. From Robert Dinnerstein. Either get out of the way or go along for the ride. I can't help but feel like you're trying to tell us that we should turn off our brains. And while that may be easy for you, it's not for us. Which either speaks to our intelligence or to your lack of fucks to give. Either way, we disagree. Here's what we think happened. A very unfortunate thing happened in this production and Paul Walker died. It was a tragic loss and everybody agrees that it was well before his time. Let's address the elephant in the room. Just because this was Paul Walker's send-off movie doesn't mean it was a great film. 
We really do believe that this film got hyped up because of the tragedy and critics just didn't let their brains work right while watching this film. You can even look at the reviews yourself. Critics that gave this movie a favorable review referred to it as a comedy and a superhero movie, and they made Wile E. Coyote jokes. That's not what you do to movies you like. So we're going to adjust the Rotten Tomato meter from 81% to 51%, just below the first movie. And don't even get us started on the other piles of garbage that the other films are that rated above the first film. So what'd you all think? Were we unfair in our review of the Rotten Tomatoes reviews? Or did we get it right? Make sure to let us know in the comments section below, guys. And as always, make sure to hit us up on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram and SoundCloud. And go over to MovieHolics.net. Leave us a question there. We're going to be doing a Q&A soon. Stay fresh, MovieHolics. <laughs>